Melbourne, Australia native Alyssa Canella, who's climbing up the all-time kills list for the Rutgers Scarlet Knights. Take a look there, you can see 934 is where Canella sits right now as she looks to reach that thousand mark here before the end of the season as we transition now to take a look at the starting lineups for both of these teams here this evening for the Purdue Boilermakers. Eva Hudson, Chloe Shikoyin, Taylor Anderson, Ryan McAleer, Raven Colvin, Lourdes Myers, and Ali Hornung round up the lineup for the Boilers and for the Rutgers Scarlet Knights. Hardison, Deerstad, Vizentine, Robinson, Lee, Jesuits, and Canella, as we mentioned, in the open for the Scarlet Knights. We look to get underway here in Holloway Gymnasium, one of the most electric environments in all of Big Ten volleyball is Holloway Gymnasium. The Boilermakers have the block party here in full this evening. We thank you again for joining us on your screens here on Big Ten Plus as we get set to get underway. It appears as if the Scarlet Knights will have the ball first. See Chloe Shakoin there, the sophomore standout for the Purdue Boilermakers. 281 kills this season, 3.16 per set. 12 double doubles for the sophomore as she looks to get us going here is correction. The pretty Boilermakers will have the first serve and that'll come out of the hands of Shacoin. Blocked at the net, Lourdes Myers, one nothing Purdue. Myers has been one of the most improved players for Dave Shondell's pretty Boilermakers over the last two seasons. She's been a nice compliment to Raven Colvin in the middle for the Boilers, who lead 1-0. Off the hands of Myers again. Rutgers plays it, sets it on the outside for Canella, and she gets started early. First point of the matchup for the Scarlet Knights, and the first kill for Canella. Yeah, Canella does a good job here, putting that right where Myers can't get her hands, just the fingertips able to get a graze of the ball right there, and that one's sailing out of bounds for a Rutgers point. Lexi Vizentine into the net. First service error of the matchup for the Scarlet Knights, something they're gonna have to watch out for here. We talked to the SID of the Scarlet Knights earlier this afternoon, and she said that's something that they were concerned about is trying to limit the errors. First one of the matchup for Rutgers. Now Ellie Hornung descended away for the Purdue Boilermakers. Hornung, Defensive Player of the Week last year, the second time this season Hornung has gone Defensive Player of the Week. Scarlet Knights able to keep it alive, and that one sails long out of the hands of Avery Jesuits. So a attack error for the Scarlet Knights after the service error, the Boilers lead 3-1. Yeah, Rutgers not starting out how they would like to. You said it like earlier, their coach was talking about how they want to start cleaning things up this season, and it's not going uh, good here for the Scarlet Knights early on in this matchup. See if the Scarlet Knights can make a change here. A free ball as the Boilers get the ball back. Out of the hands of Raven Colvin off the slide. Rutgers was able to play it. Canella stuffed at the net by Raven Colvin. The Big Ten leader in blocks, and you can see why on that play there. Colvin with her 140th block of the season, averaging 1.56 per set, which is good for first in the Big Ten Conference. Hornung able to keep it alive. Shakoin from all the way over the other side of the court. Keeps it up. Hudson just gets it over. Set to Canella again. Off the boiler block. Set for Colvin. And that one is true. Raven Colvin, her second kill of the matchup. Boilers lead 5-1. And that's why you don't give up on a play like that. Chloe Shakoin does a great job. That ball's floating over towards her bench. Some of the coaches had to jump out of the way, but Shakoin making a great play there to keep it alive, ending up in a point for Purdue. Chloe Shikoyan, sneaky, so good. Does everything for the Purdue Boilermakers. Not able to keep the ball up there on that one after a nice swing from Natalie Robinson. Robinson splits the boiler block there and finds the kill. 5-2 now. Rutgers trailing by three. Their libero, Kenzie Deerstad, back to serve it away. Deerstad from Papillion, Nebraska, joust at the net. One by the Boilers and Taylor Anderson. Taylor Anderson realizing there that 
That pass isn't going to be able to be set for her, so she goes up and makes a play at the net, doing a great job beating Jesselwitz and getting that point. Taylor Anderson, the 6'1 sophomore from San Antonio, Texas, all Big Ten freshman team last season. Having a big season here this year for the Boilers. Set to Canella. Off the antenna. So point Purdue, they lead, now lead 7-2. Yeah, Purdue getting off to an early start here. Fast 7-2. Last time they played against Rutgers was early this month. They won, they won three sets in a row, closing it out in a shutout. And it's kind of looking the same thing here as we are here early on in the first set. Boilers hitting 400 early on. Second block of the matchup for Raven Colvin, and the Boilers lead by six. Colvin so good at the net. Outside, matchup with Colvin. Anderson to send it away. Boilers up six. Canella again, right to Shacoin in the back row, to Hudson. A nice dig there from Byzantine to keep it up for the Scarlet Knights. Into the block of the Boilers. But that one goes on the side out, point Rutgers after a nice swing from Avery Jesowitz. Yeah, Jesowitz doing a good job there. Barely out of bounds at all off of Raven Colvin's hands, but that's a big point for Rutgers as they stop Purdue's run. Not so fast, my friend, as Dave Shondell has pulled out the challenge card. Wants to have that one looked at. Excuse me, correction. Dave Shondell decided to put the challenge card away. The line judge must have said something to him, so now the ball in the hands of Lily Bolin, the freshman from Lebanon, Ohio, to send it away for the Scarlet Knights, down 8-3. Anderson sets Carr. Oilers get the ball back, down the line to Hudson. Off the top of the Scarlet Knight block, Eva Hudson with her first kill of the matchup, Oilers lead by six. Yeah, Eva Hudson was our focus coming into this game and getting her involved here early is definitely something Purdue wants to do if they want to continue dominating the way they have against Rutgers. Purdue Boilermakers feeling Eva, we must, as they try to ride the wave of, of offense from the junior. Scarlet Knights get it over. Anderson sets down the line to Lizzie Carr, who's able to put it down. Carr's first kill of the matchup. Carr also having a, a massive week last week. A career mark in both kills and blocks. The Rutgers Scarlet Knights want to call a timeout. The Boilers up seven. We'll step away for 60 seconds here on Big Ten Plus. Back inside Holloway Gymnasium, 10 to three here early on. And the stars are out here tonight in full at Holloway. Miles Colvin out here supporting his sister, Raven Miles, a star on the Purdue men's basketball team. And a big matchup on Friday night against the number two ranked Alabama Crimson Tide. But back in here on the Terraflex, 10-3 Purdue. Out of the timeout, see if Rutgers can make the adjustments. Hudson out of the back row, kept up by the Scarlet Knights. Rutgers struggling to find range. It's that one, a huge swing from Lizzie Carr is gonna find the floor. Carr's second kill of the matchup. Oilers lead by eight. We talked about Lizzie Carr before we went to our last break. Carr had a career week last week. Career high, 10 blocks, excuse me, six blocks against the University of Michigan and also 10 kills versus Indiana. Carr coming on late. 
to Colvin. Off the tape. Scarlet Knights keep it up. Into the block of the Boilers off the hand of Avery Jesuits. A side out for the Scarlet Knights. The second time they've been able to figure that out here against the Boiler block. Yeah, Jesuits doing a good job. Like you mentioned, the second time she's now done that for this Rutgers team. She's looked good so far early on in this first set. I wouldn't be surprised if they keep going back to her. Jesuits, the 6'3 freshman outside hitter from Plymouth, Minnesota. Back-to-back -back points for the Scarlet Knights as that one sails long out of the hands of Chloe Shacoin, 11-5 now, and back-to-back -back points for Rutgers. Jesuits averaging 1.99 kills per set. And we talked about it earlier on. Now we're actually going to get the review. Dave Shandell pulls the green card out and says, I want to take a look at that one. And wondering if there is a touch here, so we'll have to wait and see what the line judge sees over there. Yeah, it was definitely close, respectable challenge by their coach. And this one could really go either way. So get a second look at it here. It looks like it just missed. You got Zora Hardinson and Anna Hartman there at the net. Looking at the hand, the right hand looks like the right hand of Hardinson and the left hand of Hartman. How about you, partner? Do you see any, any, any movement there? Uh, I don't see any movement on that play in particular. I, di I didn't see it. I was looking really at that thumb of Hardinson. I think that's where they probably would have seen it. It was very, very close. And also the, the pointer finger as well and the pinky of... Um... Yeah, Hardinson looked like it, looked like it might have hit the, the pinky or the ring finger of Hardinson. I did see some movement there, but again, that's why I'm sitting over here with a headset on and not with a blue shirt on. Looks like we are going to get a call, though, here from the sideline judge. And it appears there was a touch at the net. So a successful challenge for Dave Shondell and the Purdue Boilermakers. Sees the run end for the Scarlet Knights. The Boilers get the ball back 12-4 now. Nice job there by Dave Shondell, taking advantage of those two challenges he gets. Definitely a momentum killer. Rutgers, a couple points in a row there, and that just gets taken away from him and goes right back to Purdue. And it's always a little bit more demoralizing when you lose it off a challenge. So Raven Colvin to serve now, the senior middle block from Indianapolis, Indiana. Eighth in the Big Ten this season with 32 service aces. Their first serve here this evening. That one sails a little bit wide. First service ace for the Purdue, service error for the Purdue Boilermakers. Gives the ball right back to Rutgers. And Zora Hardinson back to serve. Hardinson, the 6'2 sophomore from Palm Bay, Florida. Not able to play that one after a big swing from Chloe Chacoin. Willers lead 13-5. After the first kill, the matchup for Shakorn. Yeah, that one was smoke. Hardison tried her best to make a play, but kind of hard to do anything with something when it's coming that fast. So that's a great hit there from Chloe Shakorn. Ryan McAleer back to serve for the Purdue Boilermakers, the 5'6 freshman from Overland Park, Kansas. Number one DS out of Kansas. He's been in the starting lineup for the Boilers all season. A joust at the net, won by Chloe Shakorn. Her second kill of the matchup. What a play. Shakorn back to back points here for Purdue. Does a great job faking the hit with her right hand, pushing that over with her left. That one falling straight to the floor point there for Purdue, now up nine. Has to feel good for Shakoin getting that one there at the net. Off the hands of Shakoin, kept up by Myers. And Shakoin going back to back as that one was off the fingertips of the Scarlet Knights. Yeah, they keep going back to Shakoin. They like that matchup they have right there over on the left side going against Anna Hartman. And she's done a great job there. Now back-to-back -back points for Chloe Shakoin. Shakoin, 281 kills this season. Airless versus Indiana last weekend. 12 kills on a 400 clip. Shakoin does it all for the Boilers, both offensively and defensively. Nice dig there by Ali Hornung. Into the block. And a kill for the Scarlet Knights after a nice block there at the net. Yeah, Anna Hartman got beat two times in a row, but she was ready for that one going right off that right arm. Back down past Chloe Shakoin before she could make a reaction to it. And it looks like Hartman's going to take a seat there. The 6'2 sophomore from Murfreesboro, Tennessee. It's a break, and now Georgia Lee comes in. 
6'1 sophomore setter from Phoenix, Arizona sends it away. Play to Myers. Nice dig there by McAleer to keep it up for the Boilers. McAleer not able to get that one. Another kill for Canella, her second. Along with one dig as well. They're going to need Canella to fire up here. Yeah, McAleer did her best, or tried her best on that one. She got the first one up, second one just a little bit out of the reach off the hands of Chloe Shacoin. That's going to be another one for Rutgers. And that's going to be a service ace for Georgia Lee. First service ace of the matchup for the Scarlet Knights. Couldn't come at a better time down now. As Lee looks to go back to back here. Shacoin's able to play that one. Anderson back to Shacoin. And Chloe Shacoin, her fifth kill of the matchup, gives the Boilers an eight point advantage. And Shacoin now goes back behind the service line. Yeah, Shacoin, a little bit of an error there on the previous play, comes right back out, out one part of her head out and then uh, in one part of the head out the other she doesn't remember that last play keeps going and gets that point there for Purdue correct my partner there uh, short-term memory for Chloe Shacoin as she was able to finish off on that last one we'll see here if the Boilers can do something Shacoin out of the back row to Hudson kept alive by the Scarlet Knights what a dig out of the back row now McAleer to Hudson nice job there by Deerstad to keep it up to Canella off the block of Eva Hudson, and that one is down. 17 to eight, Purdue. Something that you haven't seen up until the last few weeks, but Eva Hudson's a blocking machine, I'm known for her offense, but the last couple of weeks has been helping out at the net for the Boilers. You saw that one there, 17 to eight now, out of the hands of Shacoin. Stuffed at the net by the block of the Boilers gives Purdue a 10-point advantage. And like you're saying about Eva Colvin, you were talking about her defense, and with her being one of their best offensive players, leading the team in kills and kills per set, when you can get that defensive part out of her as well, that just makes her even more dangerous than she already is. Four blocks now for the Purdue Boilermakers. Is it starting to add up defensively? Canella wasn't able to find that one. Hudson tried to go down the line, kept up by Lee, kept up there. By the Boilers, Libero, a joust at the net, won by the Scarlet Knights into the lap of the Boilers. Hudson tips it over. Rutgers. Somehow able to be kept alive by McAleer. McAleer again. Anderson at the net. After a strong volley by both teams, the Boilermakers able to finish that one off. It is now 19-8. McAleer, what a job there. I don't know how she recovered from that first one, but she barely does just in time. Floating that up, and Anderson makes a great... For college volleyball season, every win means just a little bit more here. The Purdue Boilermakers lead the Rutgers Scarlet Knights, 19-8 in set number one here. Out of the hands of Canella. Anderson down the line to Hudson. Hudson finishes off the trash at the net. 20-8 now, Purdue. Hudson with her second kill of the matchup. Yeah, Hudson does a good job there, rotating over to the middle, almost colliding with Lourdes Myers, but able to communicate just, a, just enough for her to get that kill for Purdue. Purdue in the midst of a 5-0 scoring run. First to 20 here in set number one. Chacoin sent away. Boilers have been electric over the last couple of weeks, but that one was electric out of the hands of Lexi Visentine. As the Boilers were not able to handle that one, and now... Byzantine goes back behind the service line. How about that, TJ? You want to get in front of that? Definitely not. Definitely not. And Byzantine Brian. following that up with a service ace after the kill at the net. So back-to-back -back points for the Scarlet Knights. Lourdes Myers on the slide. 21-10 now, Purdue after Myers getting her second of the matchup. Allie Hornung back to serve now for the Purdue Boilermakers. Hornung, two-time Defensive Player of the Week, was Defensive Player of the Week in the Big Ten Conference last week. 
huge swing on the outside from Canella as she's able to put that one down for her third of the matchup. <laughs> Trying to feed Alyssa Canella. 14 total attacks so far. One dig. Off the block, led by Canella. On the slide to Raven Colvin, and she finishes at the net. Great back set there from Taylor Anderson. Colvin goes up off of her left foot there, putting that one past number 17, Avery Jesowitz. And that one's going to hit the floor here, giving Purdue an 11 point lead, three points away from taking this first set. Colvin has been a huge piece for the Boilermakers. Is that one? Just missing there, you see the look on Colvin's face as she turns and kind of apologizes to her teammates. Normally Colvin successful on those jousts. But Point Rutgers, ball back in the court of the Scarlet Knights. Lily Bolin now back to serve. 5'7 freshman from Lebanon, Ohio. And three eight assists per set this season for Bolin. Nice dig out of the back row, almost knocked. Is it off her feet? What a dig out of the back row from Shacoin. And good defense leads to offense as that one, an error for the Scarlet Knights, aim it to the antenna. 23-12, now Purdue. Yeah, Mac, both Macular and Shacoin. Hudson sends it away at the net. Off the hands of Colvin, back to the lap of the Scarlet Knights. Some confusion, a free ball for Purdue. Hudson wasn't able to get the, all of that one off the tape. Nice swing there from Jesuits, splitting the block of the Boilers for the kill. Jesuits now back to serve. Splitting that one, Jesuits, three kills on the night. Hudson out of the back row. Nice dig by the libero for Rutgers. Into the hands of Raven Gray. And another point for Rutgers, back-to-back -back points now. Yeah, Rutgers trying to make a little bit of a run here as Purdue closes in on 25, now down nine. They've cut it back down to single digits. Raven Gray, the senior transfer. Need some playing time here this evening. Hudson just has to get it over a free ball for Rutgers on the outside to Hartman. Raven Colvin with the smash. Her third kill of the matchup. That brings up set point here in set number one. Doesn't get much prettier than a, than a swing there from Raven Colvin, bringing it to set point here. And now Raven Colvin going back behind the server's line, trying to get this, trying to get her team this last point. This Purdue team is just better when Raven Colvin is on the floor as now the senior from Indianapolis looks to finish off the Scarlet Knights in set one. And she does. 33rd service ace of the season for Raven Colvin. Finishes off Rutgers 25-14 here in set number one. Great setup of back and forth play here in set number one, but it was dominated by the Purdue Thousand 13. So a lot on the line here tonight for both these teams, but Rutgers really you know, trying to lay down a perfect brick here, trying to you know, trying to lay a foundation here and get that first victory, that first set victory over the Purdue Boilermakers. I said Purdue hit 351 in that set number one, 71.4% on the side out. Along with 15 kills, the Boilers were led by Chloe Shacoin, who had five kills on a 571 clip. Along with five digs, you see Eva Hudson there. Look at Kenzie Deerstad. Libero for the Rector Scarlet Knights, trying to get her team fired up as they will Start with the ball here in the set number two. Lily Bowen back to send it away. Bowen two service aces away from cracking the top 10 list here at Rutgers.
Into set number two we go. Hudson down the middle, kept up. Cuba Hudson keeping it up live again. Chloe Shacoin with some speed. Joust at the net. Into the net is called against the Scarlet Knights. Point for Purdue, one nothing early on in set number two. Purdue starting off right where they left off in that first set with a with the first point here. They're looking to continue momentum that they carried over from that first set to the second one and keep the keep uh, their foot pressed down on the pedal. Shacoin back to serve for the Boilermakers. Shacoin leading the offensive category for the Boilers here through set one. Hudson keeps it alive, and Anderson sneaky with the kill as she drops that one, a teardrop into the back corner. Kenzie Deerstad trying to dive and keep that one off the floor. A little bit too late there. Or there's up 2 0 early on. To Hudson. Off the hands of Bolin. Boilers play it. Tapped over by Myers. Kept alive and finished off by Avery Jesuits. Tipping it back with Myers off the hand of Myers, finishing the play. Yeah, Myers is trying to keep the ball up there. She's doing the best she can, just happens to go off that right part of her hand and falls right where Ryan McIntyre can knock it to that ball. Avery Jesuits descended away for the Scarlet Knights. As that one sails long, another service error for the Rutgers Scarlet Knights. Their second here this evening, and it couldn't have come at a worse time. Ali Hornung sends it away for Purdue. Tapped over a block at the net from Eva Hudson. Hudson's second block of the matchup. Yeah, such as too close to the net there, and Hudson realizes that quickly, gets over there and puts that one down before Anna Hartman can get over there. 4-1 now Purdue. As that one sails long out of the hands of Jesuits. 5-1 Purdue. Oilers have three hitters with two blocks and one with three. Oilers really dominating at the net here this evening. Another error for the Scarlet Knights. Another point for the Purdue Boilermakers at 6-1. And those are the errors that you can't have here if you're Rutgers. You've already been struggling early on in this set. You had a service error, and then you go out and you do that, and you're just continuing to let Purdue build up this momentum with a five-point lead here in the second set after you're already down 1-0. Stuffed at the net. Combination block of Anderson and Colvin does it for the Boilers. That's just tough there when you're Lexi Byzantine. There's nothing you can do there. Into the trees at the net, and the Boilers are going to win that one more times than not. 7-1 early on here for Purdue. I'm going to say that one was a, a, a carry by Raven Colvin, and that one, a tough break there for Col Colvin and the Boilermakers, but she knew what, knew what it was as soon as it happened. Get a nice look there over at the Rutgers Scarlet Knights. Head coach, Caitlin Schwehofer in her fifth season on the sidelines for the Scarlet Knights. Going to make some changes here. That one sails long out of the hands of Raven Colvin. An attack error for the Boilers at 7-3 now. See on that one there, a little bit too much mustard there from Colvin is that one. But a clear trajectory and it wasn't in bounds. Ball back to Rutgers. Hardinson sends it away. Down the line to Hudson. Off the block of the Scarlet Knights. One more time down the line for Anna Hartman. Hartman with her first kill of the matchup, 7-4 now. Hartman getting her first kill of the matchup at a good time. Rutgers starting to build a little bit of momentum for themselves. Now only down by three, and a good opportunity here for Zora Hardinson to continue that. That one was a point for the Boilers. Another service error, the third now for Rutgers. Now Taylor Anderson back to serve. 
Anderson follows up the error from the Scarlet Knights with an error of her own. So after the exchange of errors, the Scarlet Knights have the ball back down three. Yeah, with that surface error, they're just canceling, canceling each other out. Ruck, Rucker's catching a little bit of a break there that Purdue didn't take advantage of their surface error. wonder if it was that error's sign behind Taylor Anderson that kind of threw her off a little bit. They're not supposed to do that. Yeah, maybe. Lock party's trying to just <laughs> strike the team in red, not the team in white. 8-5 now. Lizzie Carr with the hammer. Carr's third of the matchup. 9-5 now, Purdue. Carr has started coming on as of late last couple of weeks, earning some more playing time for Dave Shondell. Into the block, and Carr goes back to back. Her fourth in the matchup now. As you say, ball go off of Raven Colvin and Lizzie Carr barely having to jump off the ground, standing at six foot. And with her playing well, with that height advantage, it can make Purdue that much more dangerous than they had been earlier on in the season. Joust at the net, won by the Boilers. Big swing from Carr, played out of the back row by the libero. Off the hands of Carr at the, on the, the block at the net. Down the line to Shakorin. That one was tooled off the block of the Scarlet Knights. Another kill for Chloe Shakorin, her fifth. Eva Hudson to serve for Purdue. Drops that one in there. Hornung with a smile on her face keeps that one alive. And Lizzie Carr, if some is good, more is better. The third kill of set number two for Lizzie Carr and the Boilers lead 12-5. Hey, if it's not broke, don't fix it. Lizzie Carr gets her first one coming in off the bench and she continues to thrive over on that right side. I, if I was Purdue's head coach right here, I would continue to go back to Lizzie Carr with her being on fire in this current moment. Much like set one here, the Boilers Dominating in set number two in the mid 16th time in Dave Shondell's career. They've had 20 or more wins. 10th time in its tenure, this team is in 20 or 20 and five or better. Scarlet Knights able to keep that one alive. A free ball. What a save. It looked like a save from Ali Hornung, but it finds the floor. So point Rutgers out of the timeout. Yeah, Hornung does her best opportunity. Takes a, her best uh, attempt at that one. Unfortunately for Purdue, that one goes where no one else is on the floor heading out of bounds. Point for Rutgers. To Shacoin. Shacoin tools that one off the block of the Scarlet Knights for her seventh kill of the matchup. Purdue leads 13 to six. Another note about Dave Shondell, the 20 win mark this early in the season. 86% chance the Boilers reach the regional semifinals. Dave Shondell trying to take the Boilers to the final four, and someone who's also trying to do that, Raven Colvin, with her second service ace of the matchup. Yeah, Colvin's looks good behind the servers line here tonight. Like you mentioned, second server, uh, second servers ace for Raven Colvin here tonight. She'll look to make it a second in a row and third on the night right here. 34 service aces now for Colvin this season. Right now, sitting eighth in the Big Ten Conference. We're going to change that here this evening. Set to Shacoin. Chloe Shacoin. Pinpoint accuracy, finding the floor right over the defender's head of the Scarlet Knights. And Shacoin just notices that number 10, Georgia Lee, is just playing a little bit too far up and puts that one right up over her head and out of the reach of Kenzie Durstad. And it falls in right there in that back corner. 15 to 6 now, Purdue leads. Set and finished. Alyssa Canella, her fourth kill of the matchup. Canella trying to keep her team in this one. Four kills and two digs. Kinsey Deerstadt from the service line. Chloe Shacoin, back to back kills. For the sophomore, her ninth of the matchup. She Shacoin leads is a good all hitters. Shacoin hitting video game numbers tonight, nine of 12. That one 
A little bit short there, the third service error for the Purdue Boilermakers. That one comes out of the hand of Ryan McAleer. So 16 to eight now, Purdue as Rutgers gets the ball back. Lily Bolin to serve. Bolinardi with four assists and five digs tonight. Eva Hudson out of the back row for her fourth kill of the matchup. Yeah, Eva Colvin, or Eva Hudson, sorry, comes in from that back row, does a great job splitting the middle right past Zora Hardinson, finding the bottom of the floor for the point for Purdue. Now 17 to eight, up nine, looking to make it a two or a double digit lead right here. Six digs and two blocks for Hudson. Lourdes Myers tooling that one off the block. Her second kill of the matchup. Boilers lead by 10 now. Lourdes Myers also with three blocks this evening. Boilers have been gatekeepers at the net tonight, not allowing Rutgers any room. Myers somehow keeps that up. Hudson. Keeps it alive, and Anderson gets it over. A free ball for Rutgers. Shakoin out of the back row. Hudson tried to save that one, but to no avail. 18 to nine now as Rutgers gets the kill. Yeah, Chloe Shakoin trying to come in with that dig there. It's a little bit too high for Eva Hudson. She tried her best to get up there, barely out of the reach of her fingertips. Rutgers finding a point. Now down nine, 18 to nine. Fun note here, Allie Dutton getting some playing time here this evening. The Lafayette, Indiana native, played at McCutcheon High School on the service there. Getting some playing time. Dutton, the 5-4 freshman. As that one is off the block of the Boilers. Point Rutgers, a beautiful play there at the net and a finish from Anna Hartman. See Dutton there. Dutton hammers at that one, but Hudson finishes it off. Eva Hudson's fifth kill of the matchup, along with two aces and six digs. Yeah, Dutton just puts that one a little bit too far. We've seen that happen a couple times tonight over on he Eva Hudson's side where that pass just goes a little bit too far over the net, and Eva Hudson's able to capitalize on those opportunities very often like we, did, like we saw her do right there. Hudson able to get that one. A correction, the previous play is a Attack error from Eva Hudson, but Hudson with the frustration finishes that one off. 19 to 11 now, Purdue. And that one drops in the back right corner. Another service ace for the Purdue Boilermakers. Their third, excuse me, their fourth. That one went out of the hands of Ali Hornung. So Set and finish at the net from Zora Hardinson. Hardinson now back to serve. Hardinson having a good game here. Eva Hudson tooling that one off the block of the Scarlet Knights. Partner, it just seems like Rutgers gets a point or two here and there, but the Boilers have really started putting things together here tonight. Yeah, Rutgers feels like it feels like they're struggling to string points along together. Like you mentioned, one or two points here or there, but not really getting any momentum going farther than that. You need bigger stretches if you want to play with a team like Purdue, and we need to see that out of Rutgers moving forward if we want to see a competitive match. Net violation called against the Purdue Boilermakers, but previous to that, Dave Shondell putting his Lafayette native in the game. Allie Shondell, his niece, the freshman, setter 5'10 from Lafayette, Indiana. She also played at McCutcheon High School, a teammate of Allie Dutton. So a nice exchange there for the teammates getting to play against each other here this evening. So it's always. Eva Hudson with the finish. 
Hudson's seventh of the matchup. The Boilers lead at 22-13. Hudson's really come alive here towards the end of the second set. Like every time she's, she's, it seems that Purdue is able to get her the ball, she's right there to finish it. And McCutcheon High School on full display here this evening. You've heard from the first two, there's the third one. Chloe Shacoin finishing that one off. Her 10th kill of the matchup to lead all hitters. Kind of a, you know, kind of a flex, even though Allie's on her team. For the, uh, the the opposing team, her former teammate Allie Dutton now playing against her. I was about to say, it's something you always dream of having when you're playing with them in high school. You always want all your teammates to be successful and play at that top level. And playing against them is always something special, especially when you have multiple here playing tonight against one another. That one sails long out of the hands of Krista Dooley. Another attack error for the Scarlet Knights, and that'll bring up set point here in set number two, 24 to 13. As West Lafayette native, Rachel Williams comes in and serve. Shondell keeps that one up to Shacoin. Dutton keeps that one up. Off the hands of her former teammate, Shacoin. Shondell to Chloe Shacoin. Stuffed at the net. Out of the hands of Shacoin, Rutgers with some good defense there. Yeah, Hardison does a good job getting over there just in the nick of time. Getting that one down, it looked like for a second there like Chicoin was going to have a moment of, of an opportunity to get that point. But Zora Hardinson had other plans. What a pancake dig out of the back row. Scarlet Knights trying to make the Boilers pay as that one sails long attack error for the Scarlet Knights. will end set number two. Purdue wins 25-14. Yeah, Purdue looking to continue this, what they've done so far in these first two sets into the third. They've looked really into volleyball, which is her mother. So just a great story and um, really happy that the Red Crew shared that last week as they were trying to uh, put notice on congestive heart failure and um, how that affects so many families. But yeah, thank you guys. Thank you, Alex. A, a heartwarming story about Avery Jesuits, and we're glad that we were able to share that with you here as we get ready to get underway in set number three. And on the court, the pretty Boilermakers are dominating here. 25 to 14 victories in both set one and set two as Chloe Shacoin gets us underway in set number three. More of the same an attitude from the junior outside hitter Hudson as she blocks another one. Boilers lead one nothing early on. Eva Hudson. Who else would you expect to be here in this first point of this le of the third set? None other than her. Eva Hudson does a great job there getting in position and getting the first point here for the Purdue Boilermakers. Three blocks for Hudson. It's that one. It's finished off by the Boilers at the net. Mortis Myers. It's two straight points for the Boilers. Myers with two kills, two digs, and four blocks here this evening. Correction as that was an attack error by Lily Bolin, so change your stat sheets on that one as that one tooled off the top of the block of the Boilermakers on the outside there by Bolin for the kill. Correction, Jesuits there on that one. Jesuits fifth of the matchup. She leads the Scarlet Knights, five, kill, five kills on 16 attempts. Just hitting over at zero, 062 now. As Eva Hudson finishes that one off, Hudson's eighth kill of the matchup. Yeah, Rutgers comes in, gets that one point there from Jesuits, but then goes right back to all Purdue. Eva Hudson comes in with a big swing, finishing that one off. Purdue leads 3-1 here early on in set number three. Allie Horn on back to serve for the Purdue Boilermakers. Set on the outside, kept up by Byzantine. McAleer keeps that one up for the Boilers. Front of the net to Hudson. Hudson just taps it over. Back to Hartman. Shacoin out of the back row. Raven Colvin with the finish. Great rally there between both the Boilermakers and the Scarlet Knights, but Raven Colvin comes in to finish it off, putting it perfectly in that back corner. She does a great job. We've seen her do that, a great job at that all season long, and she does it there once again. 
Colvin follows up the kill with a block at the net. Colvin now hitting 222 with her fourth block of the matchup. You see all smiles there as it's been all boilers here tonight. Hudson was trying to put that one down. Scarlet Knights keep it up. A missed time jump there by Lexi Byzantine. Point Purdue. They now lead 6-1 to one in the midst of a 4-0 scoring run early on here in set number three. And Caitlin Schwehofer wants to talk about it, so we will step away. Boilers lead 6-1, trying to sweep things here in set number three on Big Ten Plus. Big games coming up for the Purdue Boilermakers. We take a look at the upcoming schedule as we are under three weeks to go here in the season. The, on Sunday, the Boilers host the Illinois Fighting Illini. That game is on the Big Ten Network. You can listen to Emily Eamon and Connor Onion on that one on November 21st. Also on the Big Ten Network, the Penn State Nittany Lions. Then the West Coast swing for the Boilers against USC, Oregon, and Washington. And for the Scarlet Knights, the Ohio State Buckeyes, the Illinois Fighting Illini, Northwestern, Number four, Penn State on Big Ten Plus. Before closing the season on November 29th with Maryland also on Big Ten Plus. Scarlet Knights out of the timeout looking to put another point on the board. Not going to work there as Eva Hudson taps that one over. Hudson with her ninth kill of the matchup. And Purdue coming out of that timeout just like it never happened. Continuing their long streak here now 7-1. Purdue looking to end this third set relatively quickly. All business for the Purdue Boilermakers we talked about earlier on. The 20 win seasons for Dave Shondell, something that the Purdue Boilermakers would like to do is host the first two rounds of the NCAA tournament. As Eva Hudson can't believe herself on that one, sails that one a little bit wide point Rutgers, seven to two, but the Purdue Boilermakers would like to finish in the top 16 and earn that spot hosting the first two rounds is, again, it's a benefit. You've earned your way through winning throughout the season. And Taylor Anderson finishes that one off. Anderson's fourth kill of the matchup to go along with 23 assists. Taylor Anderson so good with that sneaky dump at the net when everyone expects her to lift the ball up, try to pass it to one of her teammates, and she just Real quickly off to the side, puts the ball on the floor. Off the top of the Hudson, Colvin block. Shacoin out of the back row, tooling that one off the tape. Shacoin finds the floor, leading all killers, excuse me, leading all hitters with 11 kills here this evening, go along with eight digs. You can see that one barely go off the hands. Scarlet Knight's trying to make a last second dive at that one, cannot come up with it. Fall into the floor now, seven point lead here for Purdue. It's Taylor Anderson served this one away. Set at the net. That one sails a little bit long, much to the celebration of the Purdue Boilermakers. Is where they trying to tell us something there? I think the ball might have went off some fingertips, but and I think the, the head coach of the Scarlet Knights, Kaitlyn Sweehoffer, is feeling that same thing as she wants to take a look at that one, thinking that it might have went off some fingers as the Purdue Boilermakers at the net. Definitely, especially in the third set, you're down 2-0. Why not throw that challenge out there? If it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. We're going to take a second look here at this replay to see for sure. I think the, uh, I think you don't need to see any more. I think the smile that was on the face of Raven Colvin told you all that you needed to know as she tried to turn away quickly from the line judges. That one looks like it went off the right hand of Raven Colvin. Yeah, you can slightly see those that middle finger and, and pointer finger push back a little bit. Volleyball being the feature as we still waiting here from the judge here. It's 10 to two in set number three. Purdue leads the record Scarlet Knights 2-0. It does look like we're finally gonna get a decision here. And we were all incorrect. <laughs> Our eyes deceived us. Must have been the angle of that ball there. Uh, but it appears as if the, the call will go in favor of the Purdue Boilermakers. 
So Dave Shondell will retain possession and Rutgers will lose one of their timeouts, or one of their challenges here. The Boilers lead by eight, middle of a 3-0 run. And that one lands in the Bermuda Triangle and finds the floor point Rutgers. Nice job there from Anna Hartman, tilling that one off the block of Eva Hudson. Dropping it right into the triangle of Boilers that weren't close enough to reach it, so. 10 to three, Georgia Lee back to serve. Anderson to Hudson down the middle. And that one is academic, Eva Hudson with her 10th kill of the matchup. The Boilers now have two hitters in double figure kills. Miles and cheers all around for the Boilers as Hudson now back to serve. Kinkella, I haven't heard her name here in a little bit, but coming and getting her fifth kill of the matchup as she goes cross court. Anderson, once again, diving effort from the Boilermakers, just barely hitting off that right arm of Anderson. We've seen that a couple times now uh, from the ball coming from that right side of Kinkella. Purdue just not able to get over in time to get that ball. Nice finish there by Kenna Woolard. Woolard coming in here and getting some playing time here this evening. Woolard, the 6-1 outside hitter, sophomore from Illinois Valley Central High School. Dunlap, Illinois native. And now Julia Kane coming in to get some time for the Boilers here, the Windermere, Florida native. 5'11 sophomore, serve specialist. Picks that one up. Back and finished off. Excuse me. Not finished off by Ward is that one. Looks like you're gonna say hit the antenna. Not sure. 12-5 though, Rutgers gets the point. Look a good kill for Purdue to me on that one. Definitely. Could have been the win that moved the antenna. Scarlet Knights keep it up. Anderson to Hudson out of the back row. A rare attack error for Eva Hudson as that one doesn't find its way over the net, so back-to-back -back points for the Scarlet Knights. And we can, we'll see here if Rutgers can finally get that three in a row that we've been talking about all night. Haven't really been able to put together a long scoring streak. But they gotta do something here, still down six in this third set. Chloe Shacoin with the finisher. She puts that one down. Her 12th kill of the matchup. The Purdue Boilermakers lead 13 to six. See Shacoin come in there, sneak to, sneaking it past the back row of Rutgers. Getting the ball back into their possession here and ending Rutgers' run of two. Boilers hitting 370 as a team, siding out at 74.3%. Melissa Kinkella. Trying to keep her team alive here. Kinkella now with seven kills. Yeah, Kinkella doing the best she can there. Putting in the middle out of reach of McAleer. She's definitely doing everything she possibly can here in this third set to keep them from getting swept here against Purdue. Lily Boland to serve for Rutgers. Back to Shacoin. Tooling that one off the block of the Scarlet Knights. Boilers lead by seven. Chicoin leading all hitters tonight. 13 kills, hitting 556. Chicoin behind the service line. Anderson to Hudson. McAleer able to dig that one up. Shacoin out of the middle. And Chloe Shacoin is cash money. Three in a row for the sophomore. 15 to seven now as Shacoin has 14 kills and eight digs. Boilers lead by eight. Free ball for the Boilers. Anderson to Hudson. 
Eva Hudson with a heat seeker. 16 to seven now Purdue. Hudson with 11. Hudson taking care of business right there. Not, not letting Rutgers get a little, even a little bit of hope on that play. Rutgers now trailing by nine points. Purdue looking to come out of this. Back inside Holloway Gymnasium, 16 to seven. The Purdue Boilermakers lead the Rutgers Scarlet Knights. The Boilers in the midst of a 3-0 scoring run. Rutgers down to their last Hail Mary here, trying to wake up offensively and try to win a set here over the Purdue Boilermakers. Chloe Shacoin back to serve. Boilers looking for their sixth, sixth sweep in eight matches as they have been dominant here in this Big Ten season. This time swing there from Chloe Shacoin, Point Rutgers out of the timeout. We've seen this story play out this evening. Rutgers calling a timeout to try to stifle the offense of the Purdue Boilermakers, but it's the response coming out of the timeout. Kenzie Deerstad back to serve. Battling the defense and the block party as Hudson's able to keep that one in the, the court of play. McAleer digs it up, Anderson. Hudson with the finisher, Eva Hudson. With her teammate, Chloe Shacoin. Hudson now with 12 kills this evening. Nine digs and three blocks. Allie Hornung to serve. 17 to eight, Purdue. Zora Hardinson finds that one. Hardinson with her second kill of the matchup. Hardison now back to serve. Hardison also has one block as well this evening. That one was off the block of the Scarlet Knights and the Boilers let that one go, but it found the floor, so back-to-back -back points for Rutgers. Yeah, there's a little bit of a miscommunication there from the, from the Boilermakers that happens there from time to time. They really haven't had too much of a problem with making mistakes so far in this game. And Rutgers, though, trying to take advantage of it and uh, get a scoring streak going for them. Joust at the net, won by Rutgers. So three in a row now for the Scarlet Knights. So Hardison looking to keep the Scarlet Knights rolling here. 17 to 11, Anderson. Into the block of Colvin and Anderson. Side out for the Scarlet Knights, 17 to 12 now. The Scarlet Knights are going on a little bit of a run here. Swing and finish by Eva Hudson. Hudson's 13th kill of the matchup, but the assist came from Taylor Anderson. Missed the previous assist, but Taylor Anderson with the 32nd assist here this evening. Now 1,001 assists in a Purdue uniform for Taylor Anderson, a huge milestone tonight for Anderson and the Boilermakers, 1,001 assists. Another one there, the 30, 33rd assist for Anderson, her 1,000 and second. Sees the Boilers up 19 to 12 now. Hudson doing what she always does. Comes up from that left side, sneaking a pass Rutgers. She's been doing it all night long, all season long, and she continues to dominate uh, Rutgers here tonight. Chloe Shacoin couldn't get, get out of the way of that heat seeker from Natalie Robinson. 19 to 13 as Rutgers is on a little bit of a run here. Take a second look at that one. Yeah, just a steamer right at Chloe Shacoin. She did her best to get that one up. Off the shoulder though, point Rutgers. Now only down by six, 19, 13. Anderson, and the finisher from Kenna Woolard. Bullard has come off the bench and given the Boilers a little bit of a spark this evening with their second kill of the matchup. 
Yeah, well, Willard has looked good here tonight off the bench in this third set. Didn't see her in the first two, but when she's been on the court, she has been phenomenal for the Boilermakers. That one goes outside of the antenna, so point Purdue. 21 to 13. As the Boilers look to finish off the Scarlet Knights in three here this evening. And Kella out of the outside. Boilers able to play it. Joust at the net. It was a two hits called against the Purdue Boilermakers. So point Rutgers, 21-14 now. I know it's a lot, it's seven, but it seems like this is the closest that Rutgers has been all evening. Yeah, it, it's never really felt like Rutgers uh, was closing in on Purdue. I mean, in the first couple of points, sure, but though you gotta look past that. Once you get to those teens, the teens and the 20s, that's where you gotta see the, the gap of the points start to close. And we just have not seen that from Rutgers here tonight. They struggled defensively, lots of mistakes. They do get a point here, though, from number 17, Avery Jesowitz. Yeah, Jesowitz. Haven't heard her name in a couple of minutes. Coming in here, trying to keep this game alive. Her sixth kill of the matchup. Jesowitz and Kinkella have both have six. Shacoin. Chloe Shacoin with her 15th kill of the matchup. Warlers lead 22 15. Shacoin, 15th kill of not only in that department, but she's done a great job defensively, coming up with huge digs, keeping hustle plays alive. She's really done it all here tonight for Purdue. Julia Kim coming off the bench to serve for the Purdue Boilermakers, but also Dave Shondell rotating some players in off the bench. Sydney Yim, the senior setter from Newburyport, Massachusetts, coming in to get some time here on the floor for the Purdue Boilermakers. As that one sails a little bit wide, another attack error. For the Rutgers Scarlet Knights, season score 23-15 now. Kane serves it a little bit too long. So the fourth service error for the Purdue Boilermakers this evening. 23-16 here in set three. Shacoin, Chloe Shacoin, so dominant here this evening, her 16th kill, leading all hitters. And that brings the faithful here at Holloway Gymnasium to their feet, as we will see set point in set number three. And the Pretty Boilermakers will also see match point here in set number three. And Ryan, Ryan Meckler is gonna come off the bench here for Purdue to try and give them this victory. McAleer sends it away. Set for Kinkella. Played by Yim. Hudson just has to get it over a free ball for Rutgers. Kinkella off the block of the Boilers. Purdue plays it. Yim. Hudson out of the back row. Off the fingertips of the middle. And that will do it. Purdue wins set number three, 25-16. 3-0 sweep for the Purdue Boilermakers. They looked great all night long, and they conclude it right there with none other than Eva Hudson. 25-16, the final score of that third set. Purdue going, now going to 12-3 here in the Big Ten Conference. Home sweet home for the Purdue Boilermakers as they extend their winning streak to five. Now 12-3 in the Big Ten Conference.
நல்லா ஹைட்டாக இருக்கு எங்க இருக்கான் இனிமே வர முடியுமா லேண்ட்மேன் இல்ல மக்கா மேலதான் இருக்கான் 